Hello, boys and girls. And welcome to Adventures in Piano Music. Let me go, let me go, let me go. You stop that. Let go of me. Now, you behave yourself. I ain't going to no concert. Now, look you. You stop it. I'm not going to listen to any long hair music. Now, let go of me, will you? Let go. Now, Jerry, you behave yourself. <laughs> there are lots of people watching us right now. Why, if I acted the way you're acting, I'd be ashamed to show my face. Well, if I had a face like yours, I'd be ashamed to show it, too. <laughs> Jerry, let go of me. Jerry, will you please behave yourself? Listen, Winch, I gotta go home. I forgot something. What did you forget? I forgot to stay there. Now, look. <laughs> let me go. Will you let me go? Jerry, please, if you'll just listen to me for a minute, if you give this half a chance, good music will find a way into your soul. Not if I find a way out of here first. Now, which... <laughs> Now, Jerry, the trouble with you is that you don't remember what Shakespeare said. If music be the food of love, play on, play on. Who said that? William Shakespeare. Now, what do you have to say? Quit hanging around with him. He's a nut. <laughs> he is not a nut, and you are being impossible. Well, gee whiz, Lynch. I can't help it. I just don't like classical music. Jerry, you don't like it because you don't understand it. it. What do you mean? Well, most people don't like anything that's strange to them. Well, I like you and you're strange. <laughs> In fact, you get strange here every day. Look, Jerry, when I say you don't like it because you don't understand it, well, I mean... Remember how you couldn't stand thunder and lightning until I explained what they were and how they happened? Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with good music. If you let me explain something about it, then once you understand it, you can't dislike it. And just like any other game, like baseball or football, the more fine points of the game you learn, the better you enjoy it. Oh, okay. How do you start to understand this stuff? Well, the first thing that you must do is develop an ear for music. An ear for good music. Oh, I got the ear for it. I just don't have the stomach for it. <laughs> Look, you don't need a stomach, just an ear. You see, music is a language. A language? That's right. Now, for example, a single tone represents a letter. Listen. A letter, huh? Uh-huh. You mean like A or D? That's right. Now, several letters make a word, or as it's called in music, a phrase. Listen. Now, several phrases make a musical sentence. And the sentence ends with a cadence. A what? A cadence. What's that? Well, a cadence is a resting point in music, kind of an ending, like when you drop your voice at a comma or a period or any punctuation mark. Oh, I see. Now, then the sentences are grouped together to make paragraphs. And all together, they make a musical story or a composition. Really? Uh-huh. Well, what does this say? I don't know. What does that say? Let me out of here. No, wait. <laughs> Jerry, will you please stop it? I'm sorry, Winch. I don't go for this stuff. I like popular music. Well, there's nothing wrong with popular music. It's very nice, but, well, it's here today and gone tomorrow. But classical music lives on and on for hundreds and hundreds of years. Well, it's time they let it rest in peace. <laughs> Tell me, Jerry, why do you like popular music? Because it's got a beat, man, like rock and roll. scooby doo 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 scooby doo 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 scooby doo 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 All right, all right, but what about do re mi fa so la si do Oh, that's fine, but it'll never be a hit like Scooty You Can Do 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 Do. That's got rhythm, man. That's got a beat. I know, Jerry, but all music has rhythm. You see, it's just that in popular music, there's one constant rhythm. 
While in classical music, there can be a number of rhythms. And once you're familiar with the piece, then you know what the rhythms are and when they're changing. When you do, well, you can keep the beat with your foot just as you do with any popular song. Yeah, but you can't sing the stuff. Well, of course you can. You can hum a polonaise by Chopin. And when you were very little, didn't I sing you to sleep with lullaby and good night? A red rose is... Yes, you, I remember that. Well, of course you do. That was Brahms' lullaby. How do you like that? Well, listen to this, Lynch. Yes. Well, what's that? The unfinished symphony. Well, I don't hear anything. I'm humming the unfinished part. <laughs> Look, Jerry, will you please just be serious for a minute? Oh, gee whiz, Lynch. If this is a concert, then where's the orchestra? Well, there isn't any orchestra. Today we're going to hear a recital by a soloist. A what? A soloist. That's someone who plays all by himself. What's the matter? Hasn't he got any friends? <laughs> Well, of course he has friends. Well, then why does he play by himself? Because he's a soloist. Solo, from the Latin word solus, meaning alone. Winchell, from the Brooklyn word Mahoney, meaning screwy. <laughs> Look, Jerry, let me explain. There are violin soloists, cello soloists, and today we're going to hear a piano solo. A recital by a very, very good friend of mine, Seymour Bernstein. And I'd like to have you meet him before the concert starts. Seymour, Seymour Bernstein. Hi, Paul. Hi, Seymour. Uh, Seymour, this is Jerry Mahoney. This is Seymour Bernstein, Jerry, the concert pianist. <laughs> eh, that's not him. What do you mean that's not him? Of course it is. Oh, yeah? Well, if he's a concert pianist, then where's his long hair? My long... Oh, I get it, Paul. Well, Jerry, I cut my hair short. I didn't want to look, you know, square. <laughs> I'm hip, man. I'm hip. Jerry, you know that Seymour has performed at concerts all over the world? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> And as a GI in the army, he gave concerts in Korea. Well, what did you do? Play the enemy to death? Je <laughs> Look, don't you act so smart, Jerry. I want you to know that at his last concert here at Town Hall, he had the audience glued to their seats. Well, that's one way to keep them there. <laughs> Very funny. That's okay, Paul. Say, Jerry, is there anything in particular you'd like to hear this morning? Oh, yes. Very much. Good. What would you like to hear? The words, this concert has been canceled. Now, <laughs> you stop that. Well, I don't like long-haired music, Lynch, and stuffed shirts. Jerry, Seymour is no more a stuffed shirt than I am. Boy, you sure leave yourself open for insults, don't you? <laughs> it just so happens that Seymour Bernstein is a regular guy. Oh, yeah? Yes. Who plays the first base of the Yankees? Phil Scourin. What was Jackie Jensen's batting average last year? 286, 122 RBIs, and 35 homers. Hey, he is human. <laughs> well, I told you so. Well, I bet you he can't play my kind of music. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised that he could. Couldn't you see more? Well, a little. Oh, this I gotta hear. Well, come on. <laughs> to say? Well, uh, a fat domino, he's not. But I guess he's not a bad guy. Oh. Or a concert pianist. Oh, of course. 
I say, Seymour. Yes, Jerry. How come you took up the piano? Well, there are a number of reasons, Jerry. First, the piano has a wonderful capacity for expression. Secondly, it can blend in with any voice and any instrument. And furthermore, playing the piano is almost like playing every instrument in the orchestra. Well, what do you mean? Well, I think what Seymour means is that the piano can paraphrase almost every musical instrument. Isn't that why most composers use the piano, Seymour? That's right, Paul. You see, Jerry, the piano has what we call a tonal unity and harmonic completeness. It enables a composer to work out the most difficult symphonic ideas right on this keyboard. Do you mean to say that a piano can sound like other musical instruments? Well, not completely, but it can come close enough so that you could almost hear the instrument you had in mind. Oh, go on, you're kidding. No, I'm not, Jerry. For example, you can almost hear the sound of a hunting horn in the sonata in C major. Sinatra's a major? I didn't know he was in the army. No. Not Sinatra. Huh? A sonata. Well, what's a sonata, Winch? Well, uh, I'm no expert in musical definitions, Jerry, but, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Seymour, uh, a sonata is a musical composition that is made up of several contrasting movements. I might just add, Paul, there are some sonatas that have only one movement. Uh -huh. For example, the one I'm going to play for you now by Domenico Scarlatti sounds just like a hunting horn. Listen. A hunting horn, okay. You can almost hear a shepherd's pipe in a piece called The Little Shepherd from the Children's Corner Suite. The Children's Corner what? Suite. Huh? Suite. Suite. Oh, kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Seymour. All right. The Little Shepherd from Debussy's Children's Corner.
Good. Well, then let's play a game. I'll play another piece, and when I'm finished, you tell me what instruments you heard, okay? Okay. Go ahead. That was the Swineherd's Dance by Bela Borta, and in it, the piano sounds like both the bagpipes and the flute. Say, can we do one more, and this time let all the kids kind of play the game too? Sure. Hey, that's a fine idea. Look, boys and girls, suppose everybody listens very, very carefully now to Seymour's next selection. And when it's over, let's see who can tell what instrument the piano sounds like. Uh, by the way, what's the name of the next selection, Seymour? Oh, I can't tell you, Paul. You see, the title of the next piece is the same as the instrument the piano imitates. Oh. So once you find out what instrument the piano is imitating, you'll know the name of the piece. Oh, I see. All right, uh, ready? Yeah, let her go!
so, Winch. But let's see if the kids out there, uh, see if they know what it was. Well, uh, can anyone in the audience tell me what that, uh, what that instrument sounded like to you? What did the piano sound? A what? A banjo. That's right. That was the name of the selection, too. Banjo. Gee whiz, Winch. You know something? What? When Seymour played those pieces, I could almost hear every one of those instruments. Well, you were supposed to hear them, Jerry. Huh? You see, that's what the composers set out to do. A composer is an artist, just like a sculptor or a painter. Only instead of capturing his subject in clay or on canvas with brush and paint, he does it with sounds. Do you mean a composer can paint a regular picture with music? Yes, he can, and he does. Uh, music has a subject matter and a form just as painting has. The only difference is that in place of the colors and the tone that the painter uses, the composer paints in sound, using high sounds and low sounds, long ones and short ones, loud ones and soft ones. Yeah, but you can see a picture. How can you hear one? Well, that's when you have to be a little imaginative. A little what? Imaginative. When someone sees things that aren't really there, he's imaginative. When someone sees things that aren't really there, he's a nut. <laughs> now, Jerry, you know that's not true. Look, when you use your imagination, you're being creative. And by listening to the composer's music, you create the picture in your mind just as the composer painted it. That's true, Jerry. Why, when you listen to a suite of piano pieces called Memories of Childhood, it's almost like looking through a picture album. No kidding. No kidding. Let me play one of these pieces for you. It's called Run Run, and in it, the composer paints a picture of children as they run around. You'll see an organ grinder pass by, and when he leaves, the children will start running again. Now, close your eyes mm -hmm. and take a good look at this picture. Okay. Did you, uh, did you see the children running? Mm-hmm. Well, then open your eyes. In a minute, I think I know one of the kids. <laughs> hey, Shorty! Are you Shorty? <laughs> Come on, I'll stop fooling around. Okay. <laughs> now, this next piece is called Ring Around the Rosie. Remember playing that when you were small, Jerry? Do you mean ring around the rosie, a pocket full of toesy, all fall down? That's it. Now, here is the composer's conception of a group of children playing that game. So close your eyes, uh -huh. listen carefully, and paint your own picture.
I must say, Seymour, that these musical portraits paint a very vivid picture. Well, then let's see if Jerry can tell us what he sees in this one. I'll tell you the name of it after I finish. All right, you go ahead, and I got my eyes closed. myself in front of the Christmas tree with my toy soldiers. Yes, that music did have a martial air to it. Then the composer succeeded. That was called March Little Soldier. Now I'm going to play the last two pieces from the suite. One is called Sleeping Time. Listen for the cuckoo in the clock and the two-hoo of a night owl. a child cry mama. And uh, what's the second one, Seymour? The second one is called Hobby Horse, which shows a child on a hobby horse falling off. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here is Sleeping Time and Hobby Horse. How do you believe a composer can paint a picture with music? Uh-huh. You know something, Lynch? What? This classical stuff isn't as tough to take as I thought it would be. You mean you want to stick around a while? Well, I... I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> 
Say, Jerry, since you're going to stay around a while, why don't you select the next piece? Me? You mean me tell you what to play? Yes. What would you like to hear? You must be kidding, Lynch. I don't know the names of any classical music. Oh, there must be at least one piece you're familiar with. Uh -uh. Let's see. Uh -uh. How about... Hey, that's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. To American children, it's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. To English children, it's Baba ba ba Well, what's classical about that? Well, it's really an old French folk song, which Mozart took and developed into a piece called Variations on a French Folk Song. Uh, you do know what an old folk song is, don't you? Oh, sure. It's a, a song that's sung by old folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. A folk song is a song or a melody that's been handed down from one generation to the next, from a father to his son, and then from that son to his son, and so on. This went on for hundreds of years. Now, in many cases, these songs were never written down. The people just learned the tunes and words by hearing others sing them or play them on simple musical instruments. Well, who wrote these folk songs? Well, nobody knows. Hmm? You see, as they were never published, there was never any record kept of the original author. Not that it really matters anyway, for music has been changed so many times by so many people who played and sang these folk songs down through the years. Perhaps the strolling minstrel who whistled it for the very first time would not even recognize it now. Anyway, that's why such music is called folk music. You see, it's really the creation of the folk who shaped and modified it as it was handed down from one generation to the next generation. Now that you know what a folk song is, Jerry, let me explain what a variation is. Oh, I know what a variation is. I learned that word in school. Variation means to change. That's right. And the variation of the folk song is to make little changes in the original melody, harmony, and rhythm. Now you understand what a folk song is, and you understand what a variation is, Suppose we listen to Mozart's variations on a French folk song, or as you know it, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. All right. Thank you. 
know something? What? It's a shame that we'll never know the name of the guy who wrote Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star for the very first time. Well, unfortunately, Jerry, you see, in the early days of music, there were very, very few musicians who had a formal education and were able to put down on paper the music they felt in their hearts. However, as time passed, more and more musicians learned to write music so that their melodies could be played and sung exactly as they had created them. Oh, you mean so it wouldn't be like the folk songs with people changing the music every time that they sang them? That's right. You see, Jerry, sound is a very funny thing. The sound of an actual happening can only occur once. Well, what do you mean? Well, for example, the sound of a real wave breaking on the shore may never happen again in just that very way. But the sound that a composer creates and writes down can be repeated over and over again as long as there's an instrument to play it and an ear to hear it. Oh, you mean just like with fairy tales, like Cinderella and Mother Goose and the old lady in a the shoe, they were the same when you was a kid as when I was a kid because they were written down? That's right. You see, once it's written down, then there's a permanent record. You know, Jerry, there once lived a great composer by the name of Robert Schumann. When Schumann was a child, his house was constantly filled with all sorts of sounds. Laughter, excitement, all the happiness that belongs in a home. Well, he loved these sounds, and because he was a composer, he was able to transpose these sounds into musical notes. In a sense, he created a diary of all the sounds of his childhood in a composition called Scenes from Childhood.
Well, Jerry, it's time for intermission. Intermission? Gee whiz, Lynch, I want to hear some more. Did I hear you say you wanted to hear more classical music? Uh-huh. I thought you didn't like this long hair stuff. Well, gee whiz, Seymour, nobody told me it was going to be like this. This is really fun. Say, Lynch, how much time is the intermission? Uh, about ten minutes. Isn't that right, Seymour? That's right, Paul. Well, listen, Lynch. Yeah? I want to go and call Knucklehead and tell him to come down here and meet us. Knucklehead? To come here? Sure. He's my best pal. <laughs> hey! <laughs> See? <laughs> well, that's all right with me. Knucklehead here, huh? Sure. I wouldn't want him to miss this stuff. It's really great. Come on, Lynch. Let's see where the telephone is. All right. Uh, see you in 10 minutes, folks. Telephone. Okay. 